G'day friends, welcome to today's YouTube video. My name is James, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Today I'm going to be stamping an illustration, which is a process I like to do from time to time with my stamp sets. These stamp sets are stamp sets I've designed. How many times can I say stamp sets this video? Start a tally. These are, well, they're three new designs, but one of them, there's two size options. None of these are available right now. My store is closed for the holidays, but I should be reopening it in February, 2022. So hopefully uh, we'll see these again next year. But for now, I just wanted to take you through the process of stamp and illustration just show you from time to time I show this um, I've done workshops called concept stamping workshops before that's a slight that's slightly different that's more of an exercise in stimulating imagination and it's very um, it's very abstract in a lot of its process but this is very simple if you think about it like a dress up dolly game like you have a paper doll and you're putting just outfits on them essentially I create the blueprints or the templates of illustrations that I want to use again and then I characterize over the top of them with my illustration I don't even try to follow them too closely sometimes I'm just using it because uh, maybe the stamp set that I'm using is symmetrical and I just want to make sure that all of my symmetry lines up and rather than gritting it all out I do the lightest impression of a stamp on the page and that way I've got all of my reference points I can work from. I've done many of these videos on YouTube before but I always like to bring them back and especially because I'm working in my Christmas journal and I've been having a few experiences that I thought would lend themselves really well to characterizing a few of these illustrations and uh, popping them into my journal as original ephemera. The I, I love that my Christmas journal has a very junk journal feel to it and it's got a ton of stuff like it's chock-a-block full already but I feel like it was missing a bit of that original art element that a lot of my other journals have so I, I did want to make sure I put something in there that kind of tied it back to just my preferences in journaling. I actually don't think there's a right or wrong way to do it but I feel like if you get those urges to do something like you think it's missing something if you've got this feeling like oh I would like it to be a bit more color coordinated um, you know that urge usually comes about for a reason so I always say just indulge that run with that little creative frenzy and you know see it through. So for me it was adding a few extra bits of original art hand-drawn elements or hand-painted but today it was just drawing. So I've used these little uh, watercolor cards. You can see that I'm taking the stamp off. These are photopolymer stamps. They're very sticky when you first get them and they smell very strong. So I always suggest people air them out, uh, but they're very durable. I then take some Tim Holtz Distress Ink and I will ink it all up. Usually when you're getting a new stamp, you have to prime it up a little bit. Uh, some people recommend using uh, like a bit of a stronger, like a VersaFine ink uh, or a pigment ink or something like that. I tend to stay away from solvent based uh, cleaners and uh, there's one type of ink, what is it? I can't think of it right now. It's listed on the back anyway. There's instructions on the back, but um, you can prime the stamp up a bit. These stamps, you do not need to sand the top layer off or anything. Please don't do that because you will lose some detail, even though they're very softly detailed because they're, you know, base sketches, they're illustration. They're, they're kind of meant to be stamped so that you'll draw over the top of them. Um, still, I wouldn't sand any of them off. Some people say you could use an eraser to kind of uh, buff you know, the surface of that stamp to get it prepared. I usually just say ink it up a few times and stamp it off onto a scrap piece of paper and that will start to uh, prime your stamp ready for use. The best thing for me is though, I actually don't need a very crisp, clear impression or anything bold. You can see that as I've been stamping them out, they've been really light impressions and I will do what's called ghost stamping or second generation stamping. So I'll, I'll put my stamp on the block, the acrylic block. This is a new set called Akiko and Ayako. Um, I will then stamp it out onto another piece of paper and then I'll stamp it uh, after that. So some of the ink is removed from the top. I'll use whatever ink is left to stamp onto the paper. Now for this, I've made the impression a little bit darker so that you can see the stamps when I'm working with them. But when I'm doing this without the camera rolling, it's very, very light impression. You can barely see it. So that when it's finished, it doesn't actually look like there was anything underneath. Sometimes you can use a water soluble ink and if you're going to watercolor the whole thing will just start to melt away once you watercolor it. So for me it's like a really easy way to get the base or the blueprint down for my sketch and then work on top of it. And like I said sometimes I just reference it. Sometimes I'm not trying to recreate the exact stamp as it is. I'll change an eye shape or maybe I'll change the nose or the lips. You can see here I've added a whole costume on. I'm kind of playing dress up dolly with all of them today. Um, and for me it's about theming. So it, it's kind of whatever I'm trying to reference. If I'm referencing a movie that I watched, I might do the character. If I'm referencing, for example, here, I watched the Nutcracker, I'm doing a Sugar Plum Fairy. So for, I, I can get my original art in there, but it's actually, you know, using all of those skills to 
build a little bit of, you know, art that relates very specifically to a real memory that I've just experienced. And this is what I really like about art journaling. And this is where I think all the skills kind of come together in this really, this really nice melting pot of, of reasons. <laughs> I'm not going to go there. I'll talk way too long for art journaling if I do. I want to keep explaining the process. So this is, um, it's what I call stamp and illustration. There's a hashtag on Instagram that I usually group all of my photos in uh, to reference this process. And I'm doing this one here. So the first one was my Christmas card with Steve and I. This, what, the next one was the Sugar Plum Fairy. This one is an ice skating Minnie Mouse because I saw Disney on ice. Um, and You'll see here, I don't actually draw Minnie Mouse. It's not like I was using the stamp to draw Minnie Mouse, although if I wanted to, I guess I could. I could reference the symmetry of the face and you know change those features out for Minnie Mouse's features. But, um, or I could just give her a nose and whiskers. But this, I wanted to just characterize Minnie Mouse as this character. I, I, it might be a little too meta for me to explain this, but I'm essentially making this girl Minnie Mouse inspired with her hair, with those big buns. That, the dolls, those stamp sets, they come with a whole bunch of hair options and a bow. I just wanted that for me. Just like Akiko and Ayako has like a little uh, kind of a grid form line bustier that is so specific. Honestly, I don't expect anyone to use that, but it's just there because I had space for it. And some people like to know if you, especially because if you've done my uh, virtual voyage workshops, we've talked about form lines before. Um, in Virtual Voyage 4, the Lamplight Cruise, we actually used. Uh, Stephen James, that stamp set, the one that I did at the beginning, that was from the Luca piece that we did. And the Akiko and Ayako have very similar features to the Runa Naito style that we did uh, in the style studies. So a lot of those are really closely linked to those. So if you see a little bit of extra pieces in there, that's probably why. <laughs> um, but I wanted to just characterize her as an ice skating Minnie Mouse because it may not be exactly what I saw, but it's a little piece of art that is connected to what I'm referencing. It was Disney on ice. So for me, that's that's a way that I don't have to draw the obvious, but I still get to play with all of the references. And it's a very real and exciting way to kind of build more of those memories into my art journaling, where I don't have to write them and I don't have to take a photo of them. I can illustrate them or paint them or create them from my imagination um, and they can, they can still reference it. It can still, it can still look like one of the memories, even though it's n it, I never saw that in real life. So that's the part of imagination that I think really comes into art journaling, and I hope that people feel kind of encouraged to look more at, because I think sometimes I, I get really stuck on the, and I laugh with Steve about this too, because Steve gets very much like this too. We get stuck on the obvious, like when Steve's doing photography or I'm doing art journaling, and I think, great, I have to, I have to document, I don't have to, but I choose to document Disney on ice. So I should draw Mickey Mouse on ice skates. Like that's the most obvious thing, right? Because what else would be Disney on ice? I mean, in reality, it could be anything, but I think most of us at first go for the complete obvious. We we're just like that as people usually. Some people are super lucky and <laughs> don't go obvious straight away, but I think it's quite normal. And I always like to challenge myself to not even find something less obvious, but just to allow myself to go less obvious. I don't think I need to push myself, uh, you know, into creating something super unique and super referential and, you know, six degrees of separation from the original every time. But for this, for instance, like this to me is exactly what I'm talking about. It's not the first thing that I would think to draw, but it still very much says Disney and ice skating. Disney on ice. So I don't know, that's that's a big part of stamp and illustration for me because it's typically, uh, you know, stamping out the blueprint and then characterizing on top of it, adding costumes or adding, you know, style references or something that specifically relates to something else. And that's how I get to document it in a really creative way. So I'm using these, now that they're all cut up, I'm using them as little bits of ephemera and I'm just sticking them to the places where I have those memories documented. So I have photos, I have writing, I have ticket stubs, I have parking meter ticket stubs, and now I have some hand-drawn elements. And I feel like it's just taken all of this journaling, you know, back more towards what I'm used to seeing in my art journals that I really enjoy seeing in my art journals. It's a collection of everything. It's too much. It's too many problematic patterns. It's bits and pieces, everything and the kitchen sink. More is more is more is more aesthetic. I love all of that but there's a very real hand-drawn element to it uh, that just kind of feels a little bit more real, like a little bit more hand-touched. 
this is my Christmas journal as it is so far. Thank you for joining me for Stampin' Illustrations today. I'll see you again another time soon. Bye.